Hello guys, today I want to show you how to work with galvanic cells problems in chemistry. I'm going to go over this problem in a very detailed way. At the end of the video, I will include a summary if you want to skip the explanation. Anyway, if you like my videos, feel free to subscribe if you're cool with that, or smash that like button, anything helps. Alright, let's go! A voltaic cell is constructed from a standard zinc 2 plus slash zinc half cell. They give us a redox potential, which is minus 0 0.763 volts, and a standard chlorine chloride half cell. The redox potential is 1.360 volts. We have four questions. The first one, what is the cathode reaction? Alright, so the first thing I'd like to discuss is the difference between a cathode and an anode. The cathode is where the reduction occurs. Electrons are gained in the cathode, so they are part of the reactants in a cell equation. And to remember this, this thing about the cathode, we can use the mnemonic REVCAT which stands for reduction occurs in the cathode and I got a picture of a red cat in here if you're good with uh, memorizing stuff looking at images if you're more like a visual learner that might help you a lot and lastly the cathode in a voltaic cell will be the half reaction that has the greatest or the most positive reduction potential between two have cells and this is worth remembering the greatest or more positive reduction potential is the cathode anyway let's continue with the anode on the other hand we have the oxidation reaction oxidation occurs in the anode electrons are lost meaning they are part of the products in a cell equation for the anode we have another mnemonic which is anox anode oxidation so again i got a picture of anox in here that you can use to remember you're a visual learner the anode is the half self with the smallest or the most negative reduction potential between a pair of cells in a galvanic cell okay let's do the first question what is the cathode reaction we said that the cathode is the part of the cell with the greatest or the most positive reduction potential we have zinc with a negative potential and we have chlorine with a positive potential meaning our cathode is the cell made of chlorine and chloride let's write this reaction I'd like to draw the arrow that separates products and reactant first in the left side we place what is in the left side of our cell in this case we have chlorine gas Cl2 and in the right side of my cell I have the chloride ion Cl with a negative charge also we said that in the cathode the electrons are part of the reactant so I'm going to put an E in here that represents the electrons how many I need? well we don't know yet first we're going to balance this equation in mass I have two chlorine atoms in here and I have one chloride in here therefore if I put a 2 in here this balances it in mass now to balance the charge we count the charge on both sides in this side I have 2 minus 1 which is minus 2 and in this side initially I have 0 let's ignore this electron in here I have 0 so how many of these electrons do I need to get minus 2 well I need 2 and that's it this is the cathode reaction and it is already balanced we have electrons as reactants because this is a reduction remember red cat and the redox potential in this reaction is the greatest positive 1.360 volts next question what is the anode reaction we said that the half cell with the lowest reduction potential would be our anode 
I will flip the cell in the oxidation direction. I'm going to start with the right side of the cell in here. So the zinc, which is the metallic zinc, a solid zinc, will be in the reactant side. And the zinc ion will be in the product side. Zinc 2 plus. Now we start to balance this reaction. In this case we have exactly one atom of zinc on both sides, so there's no need to balance in mass. To balance the charge, first we count. In this side we have 2 plus. And this is a metal, remember all metals have charge 0 when they are in solid state, so 0. Like we mentioned earlier, in the anode electrons are part of the products. I'll have some electrons in the products side. So, electrons. How many do I need? Well, if I add 2 in here, plus 2 plus in here, that gives me 0, which is the same on both sides. Regarding the cell potential of this anode reaction, they gave us a reduction potential. This is why the red means in here. But for our zinc cell, we wrote an oxidation reaction. We're going to need the oxidation potential. To get that oxidation potential, all that we need to do is change the sign of the reduction potential. Instead of minus 0 0.763 volts, we're going to write it as plus 0 0.763 volts. So just to be clear, remember, for the anode, the oxidation reaction, we flip this cell, the zinc ion, zinc 2 plus, and the zinc metal change places. So you can hear, you can see it in here. We change places. And we also change the sign of the reduction potential to make it an oxidation potential. I hope that makes sense. We're ready to get the spontaneous cell reaction, which is question C. The spontaneous cell reaction means the reaction in which the cathode is the cell with the greatest potential and the anode is the cell with the lowest potential. As the name indicates, the two half cells make the whole cell. So we add them, these two reactions, together. First, we count the number of electrons on each half reaction. If they are the same, we can add them directly. In this case, we have two in here and also two in here, meaning we can add them. Let's start with the reactants. Now, let's do the product side. As you can see, the electrons are equal on both sides, so we can cancel them out. This is our spontaneous cell reaction. You can check that the masses are already balanced, the atoms are equal on both sides, and the charges are also equal on both sides. Alright, the last question is what is the cell voltage? And since we already did a lot of work, this question is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is add these two potentials, and this will be equal to the potential of our cell, 2.123 volts. This is one way to do it, with the two half equations, flipping the anode, changing the side, but there is a formula that we can use. And this is the equation. The cell potential can be calculated by doing a subtraction. The reduction potential of the cathode minus the reduction potential of the anode. I want to be very clear in here to avoid confusions. The reduction potential of the cathode is this one. The reduction potential of the cathode because this is our cathode so we can replace in here and the reduction potential of the anode is this value in here notice that I won't change the sign, actually the sign is negative but what happens in here, you have negative times negative 
so this one will become positive so in the end we have the same potential if I'm using this formula I use the reduction potential and I don't need to change the sign of the anode because the change of sign is implicit in this minus sign so this is the formula using reduction potentials and as a summary red cat the reduction occurs in the cathode electrons are gained the cathode has the greatest or the most positive reduction potential anox the oxidation occurs in the anode electrons are lost and the anode has the smallest or most negative reduction potential the spontaneous cell reaction is a combination of the two balance half reactions and lastly the formula to calculate the cell potential it's equal to the difference of the reduction potential of the cathode and the reduction potential of the anode and that's it guys this was a pretty simple example but let me know in the comments if you want me to go over a more challenging problem I'm all ears and eyes to any suggestions anyway see you